Okay, welcome back. So what I was working on, uh, it's actually for a project I'm doing, uh, I needed to measure some magnetic fields. So, I looked at some gauze meters online, and uh, pretty expensive, so I set out to make my own here. And uh, this is just uh, the breadboarded version. So I'm going to move it to a uh, perf board here shortly. So what's going on here is we have our Arduino here. So I'm going to use one of those just because I wanted some quick code. This here is an A1302 Hall Effect sensor. It's an analog sensor and it is ratio metric. I've added a little, uh, it's a voltage divider here just to give it reference point for uh, where to do the calculations from. I'll talk about that in a moment. And then this other potentiometer is just the contrast for the uh, LCD screen here. So how this thing works this uh, A1302 sensor is when there is no magnetic field present it actually just sends out a analog voltage that is the center of what you're giving it so if it's receiving 5 volts DC which it is right now if there's no magnetic field it sends out 2.5 volts and the voltage increases if a positive field is present and it goes negative uh, if it decreases so you can actually see there's a little bit of stutter here uh, that 3. 75 you're seeing is actually the steps this thing works in because the analog to digital converter on the Arduino is 10 bit so it's not completely utilizing the number of steps this thing has and I believe it is 1.37 millivolts per gauze on uh, the sensitivity here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a magnet to my screwdriver here this is actually a 3 8 magnet that you would find in your uh, door for a security system so, you can see this going up, and there you go. If you stuff it right in there, you almost get a thousand gauze. So this thing isn't crazy accurate, but this will give you a good point of reference if you want to compare things. Let's do it like this, and see, there we go, negative. So it, it knows it's seeing the south pole of this magnet now. So now I'm just going to uh, move it over. I'm not going to bother putting an external analog to digital converter on here for this. It works fairly well. I don't have a reference device to test it against. The only other thing I'm going to do though is this voltage divider that I put in here. I put a 4.7K resistor on each side of this thing to improve selectivity. Uh, but as you can see it's kind of doing its own little thing. So I'm going to improve that by putting 10K on each side. And I think it won't be that much more exciting. I'm going to remove the uh, Atmel off of here and I will put it into a socket on a perf board and give the supporting hardware for the Arduino. I'm going to add a voltage regulator to step down from a 9 volt battery down to 5 volts and I will recycle the same screen for that. So uh, I guess I'll cut over to that next. Okay, and I'm back. I've moved this project over to a perf board. And some of the features on here is 9-volt battery, power switch, uh, not ideal, but it works. This is our potentiometer for adjusting our center point. And the one poten potentiometer here is for the contrast on the screen. This was supposed to be the backlight, but uh, the pot doesn't seem to work. There's no connection with the wiper, so I just uh, hodgepodge there across the top and I'll show it to you working. So my son's here to help me. Can you please flick the power switch to turn it on? Yes. Okay. All right, so it's loading up Can and I? here's the magnet. Now show them how it works. Stick it to that spot that I showed you. Where? On the front. So there we go. It's saying negative. It's the south pole. Can you turn the magnet around? And there you go, a positive one. So, I can't dim the backlight, but I'm going to live with it. I'm not going to try to unsolder that pot. So, kind of what I was showing before, regulator, one microfarad, one microfarad caps. And uh, I can actually fine-tune this. So I put 10K on each side of this. Still not great, but it works a lot better. Uh, the readings are kind of erratic because my son's attacking it with a magnet. But there's the crystal. There's the two... Uh, capacitors to uh, run with the crystal. 
Let's turn this off and I will show you underneath. So I've just put male header there, female header here. There's the Hall Effect sensor and here's the Atmel. Hold on a second. And here's the bottom. So I only did the wiring for the screen on the bottom. All the other wiring was on top. And... Yes. And... I made that removable to save on space. Then. Then the magnet goes on the front. So there you go. Next step now is to move this into an enclosure. So that will be what I come back with. All right. And there she is in an enclosure. So my son's gone to bed now, but uh, he helped me do this. So it's not great. If you have a 3D printer or if you had more time or whatever, you could probably do better than this. But uh, Dollarama is really my saving grace for these kinds of things. Cheese slice container. It kind of looks like at one time it might have held floppy disks. You can flip it open. So what I've done is I cut a hole so you can see the window power switch and I've added a little knob to this calibration. Is it professional? Not really. Uh, but really the points stopped from getting wrecked and I think it'll do that just fine. So we can zero it out. And back of it. Yeah, so the 10k resistors on both sides of this potentiometer was not enough to give me the uh, steps I wanted. Magnet, and I can see the whole, this is kind of semi-transparent, so I can still see the sensor, which is kind of nice. I think otherwise I would have uh, put a little mark on it or something. So there you go. So there's an A1302 Hall Effect sensor attached to an Arduino that was moved off of a breadboarder, breadboard onto a perf board, and it works pretty well. All right, well, there you go. Thanks. I'll put schematics and other information up on my blog. I'll link to it. Um, so if you want to try it, go for it. Have fun.